Welcome to the PTZ Optics Wireless Cable Advanced Setup Video. The PTZ Optics Wireless Cable is a 400 meter or 1300 feet wireless cable solution with daisy chaining capabilities which can provide increased distances of up to 1600 meters or 5249 feet. This low latency wireless solution can be paired with any device that utilizes a local area network connection and can provide up to 300 megabits of wireless transmission bandwidth. With a paired station and access point, you can connect any device to your network wirelessly. Please reference our basic setup video in the description below for more information about plug and play setup. This advanced setup video will review infrastructure and daisy chain modes and explain how each wireless cable unit can be used as either an access point or a station. In this video, we will review the advanced setup options for the PTZ Optics wireless cable. These setup instructions are not needed for basic plug and play use. Please reference our basic setup video for more information about opening the box and getting set up. The PTZ Optics wireless cable can operate in infrastructure mode or daisy chain mode. Therefore, each wireless cable can be configured to operate as an access point or a base station. We recommend that users start with infrastructure mode and only use daisy chain mode if the specific use is warranted. By default, the PTZ Optics wireless cables are pre-paired in infrastructure mode with one access point and one station. In this configuration, you can add additional wireless cable station units that will transmit back to the central access point. This configuration can be described as a hub and spoke model. In this video, we will discuss how you you can add additional wireless cable stations to your original prepared units when in infrastructure mode. Additionally, we will discuss how to use daisy chain mode, which allows you to extend the reach of your wireless cable setup. In daisy chain mode, all PT-WC-G1 base units operate as access points. The access points use the same ESSID and password. Additional access points can be added as needed and connect it to the terminal ends of the cascade. We do not recommend using more than five stations per access point. Let's get started in infrastructure mode and demonstrate the back end of each unit for advanced functionality. To do this, we will need to connect to each wireless cable unit directly with a computer. Note, you may need to configure your ethernet adapter to be on the same IP range as the device for this initial setup. In Windows, you can do this in the ethernet settings area by clicking Clicking Change Adapter Setting. Right click your Ethernet adapter and click Properties. Then click Internet Protocol Version 4 TCP slash IP Version 4 Properties and select Use the following IP address. Choose an IP address in the range of 192.168.1 and then choose your IP. The first step is to power on and connect your first base unit to your computer via an Ethernet cable. Then open up a web browser and input the IP address of the base unit. Unit. The default IP address of the unit is either 192.168.1.100 in AP mode or 192.168.1.200 in station mode. The default login credentials are admin, admin. First, click on the wireless setting in the config section. You will need one base unit operating in device mode access point. All other units should be set to station mode. Set up the access point first. Define the ESSID, passphrase, and encryption method that you would like to use. Power on and connect the PTWC-G1 station and enter the device IP into your internet browser and log in with the credentials as before. While logged into the device in the station mode, power the access point. Click scan access point in the wireless section of the config menu of the station. Select the ESSID configured in the access point and enter the passphrase into the new window. If successful, the indication connection link light will change from flashing to solid. The devices will retain the connection through a power cycle. Power on and connect the station to your LAN port of your network device. Now you can power on your network device. You should be able to access the network device through this station. Note, to avoid creating a loop in your network during the setup, connect 
each base station unit one at a time for configuration. Note, you can use the wireless cable IP search tool to locate a wireless cable device on your network or change an IP address. This tool is available at ptzoptics.com downloads. Now let's look at daisy chain mode. In daisy chain mode, all base station units operate as access points. The access points use the same ESS ID and password. Additional access points can be added as needed and connected to the terminal ends of the cascade. Caution: To avoid creating a loop in your network during setup, connect each device one at a time during configuration. First, Power on and connect each base unit to your computer via Ethernet cable one at a time. Then open up a web browser and input the default IP address of the unit, which is 192.168.1.100. You can then enter the default login credentials, which for username is admin and password is admin. Click on the wireless area in the config section. All base units operate in device mode access point when we're using daisy chain mode. Define the ESS ID, password, and encryption method. Click on the WDS section in the config area. In the WDS page, enable the WDS sections and type the MAC address for all other base units in the chain. Simply type in the MAC address found on the back of your unit and press save. You do not need to enter the passphrase. This will be entered automatically. Now let's look at an example WDS configuration that includes four units. You will see that unit one has the MAC address of unit two saved in WDS zero. You will see that unit two has the MAC address of unit one and unit three saved in WDS zero and WDS one. You will see that unit three has the MAC address of unit two and unit four saved in WDS zero and WDS one. And then finally, Unit four has the MAC address of unit three in WDS zero. Daisy chain mode will reduce transmission bandwidth and level three cascading is recommended. All device IP and MAC address information are in the configuration networking webpage. A network configuration tool is included for configuring your base units during setup and for troubleshooting. If you have any questions during the setup of your wireless cable, feel free to reach out to our support team at the phone number listed on PTZ optics.com. You can also review frequently asked questions on our knowledge base available at help.ptzoptics.com. Enjoy! PTZ Optics, where broadcast quality is made affordable.